Nick at Gallery of Podiatry here. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about growing pains. Uh, with school holidays just finished here, uh, we've seen a ton of young kids come in lately with growing pains and generally they will have symptoms like um, leg pains, so particularly down the front of the shins in this area here. Um, sometimes they'll get thigh pain and, and general foot and ankle pain as well. Sometimes they'll even be waking up in the middle of the night asking you to rub their legs and these types of things. So look, it's something that, uh, that we have really good results with, um, so don't feel like you need to put up with it. Sometimes people have, you know, you may have seen a GP or another specialist and they've said to you, yes, it's growing pains, but they'll often tell you there's not much you can do about it. It's a stage that they go through and they'll eventually grow out of it. So I can tell you right now that that's not really true because there definitely are things that we can do about it. But you do need to address the cause of the problem. And the cause of the problem is generally biomechanical in nature. So what I mean by that is that it's all to do with the way your child is walking and their foot and lower limb function. So what we'll be talking to you about is, yes, we'll still get you to rub their legs and uh, maybe be massaging their legs and uh, heat packs work really well. Rest is great for it as well because essentially it is an overuse injury. But the two big things that we'll always uh, get you to do will be to introduce some really good supportive footwear and we'll definitely be talking to you about some sort of arch supports or orthotics to go into their shoes because we need to control the foot function. Uh, the poor foot function is what causes these muscles in the front of the legs to be overused and then they start to ache and be really sore, particularly during the night. So yeah, don't be afraid. There's definitely things that we can do about it. And remember that pain with anyone, let alone a child, is, is not right. It's a sign that something's not right. So you definitely should be getting on top of it. So um, look, that's really all I wanted to talk about with you today. Uh, if you do have any questions, pop them in the comment box below here and I'll definitely answer them for you. Um, if you know someone who's got a kid who's suffering with growing pains, then feel free to share this video with them or tag them in the comment box below. Before the blue dye can be applied to the nail, it's important that we thin the nail down as much as possible. This is painless. We use a burr to do this. We use a blue dye to make the fungal cells sensitive to light. Fungal cells are different to human cells because they have a cell wall. A special blue dye that we put on makes them sensitive to light, which causes the cell walls to break down. And this is what destroys the fungal cells, but is completely harmless to the human cells. So the blue dye we place on the nail is quite intense in colour, and it needs to be left on for about 10 minutes to any of the affected nails. Once this has had a chance to stain the fungal cells, we can then apply the light. And the light will be applied for nine and a half minutes for each nail. Once the blue dye has been left on, for 10 minutes, we can then use the light from the PACT unit. And this introduces light to the subject at a particular frequency. And it's nine and a half minutes we apply it for. It's painless and it's completely harmless to human cells as well. 
but these sensitised fungal cells will now react to the light. It gets placed over the nail. And now it's just a case of being patient and waiting. This process is repeated three times in the first week. It's important that it happens three times in the first week to get the, the most benefit from the treatment. And then after three months time we can review again, at which point hopefully the nail will be showing signs of clear healthy regrowth at the base of the nail. More severe cases of fungal nail infection may require monthly treatments. And you'd be looking for about six months for resolution. Rachel here from Galleria Podiatry. Summer's just around the corner and patients often ask us, what can I do with my orthotics in summer? I don't have any shoes that fit my orthotics and I can't continue to wear my sneakers or my enclosed shoes in summer, it's just too hot. Well, I've got Tom here from Paramed Australia, um, who's the owner of Paramed Lab, and he's got some exciting news to share with us all. Yeah, thanks Rachel. Um, what we were able to do with our Paramed technology is not only uh, manufacture the uh, patient's orthotics for you to fit into their sandals or their uh, work shoes or their boots, but also we can then transform their orthotic prescription into a pair of orthotic thongs. So essentially the patient's orthotic made into an orthotic thong, which is custom fit with the volume of that patient's foot with an Italian leather strap fitted with an outsole in clinic on the outsole, which is non-scuffing, non-marking, able to be worn in the house, on the tiles, wooden floors, allows the patient to be at work, their sporting activity wearing their orthotic devices, weekends at home wearing their orthotic thongs to ensure they're getting the maximum amount of control and support and How comfort. How awesome is that? So that's right, you heard it. We can make your custom made orthotics into a thong. You can pick the color strap that you like, um, there's all sorts of different variations that we can do. Problem solved guys, summer is sorted. Um, any questions, please comment below and we're more, ha more than happy to answer them for you. Have a great day, thanks a lot, bye for now. So I understand uh, heel pain is the number one foot pathology. Specifically, you're going to tell us a little bit about plantar fasciitis. Yes, that's correct, Bruce. Um, if we look at this uh, picture here, we'll see uh, the common area of pain is underneath the base of the heel. And uh, the common term medically is plantar fasciitis, which means inflammation of the plantar fascia, but more at the base or the origin of it. What patients normally complain of is a pain that initially can occur on rising, whether it's getting out of bed in the morning or sitting down for a long period of time then standing up quickly. What happens is they get a sharp piercing pain underneath the base of the heel, much like a stone bruise. They tend to hobble around for a few minutes and then the pain seems to disperse and go away. However, if they sit down or lie down the next, next, next morning it occurs again. Now what happens here, I say to, to a lot of people, when you're in bed lying down, your foot is actually in a relaxed position. Your arch is, has no strain on it. And we all know medically that the plantar fascia runs from the base of the uh, calcaneus, the tibial tubercle, runs up to the forefoot and splits into the five metatarsal areas like this. Now if you're in bed like this, the plantar fascia is much like a bowstring. There's your bow mm -hmm. and the fascia forms the bowstring. As soon as you get up in the morning, you put all your weight on your foot, your foot tends to pronate excessively due to the nature versus civilization aspect and when you collapse the mid-tarsal area due to excess pronation, it creates a massive force over the origin of the plantar fascia. If you look at the foot, you'll see most of the weight runs over this rear section. So right. you get the detachment at the heel, okay. not in the middle of the foot or so in the front the of the foot. Attractional force you're talking about. Exactly. So you sit down, your foot is relaxed, you stand up, bang. And the trick is here is when you stand up in the morning or you get out of bed, I caution patients to get out of bed very slowly because as soon as you get that pain, you've ruptured microscopically the plantar fascia. You get bleeding into that area and then later on, um, you're not breaking the cycle. So what I advise is the use of an orthotic or even better, a sandal beside the bed, an ortho heel sandal, say, or some product that is um, 
orthotic in respect so that you don't get out, collapse the foot and create that chain reaction day by day. Hey everyone, it's Nick at Galleria Podiatry here. I've got Rachel with me today and we're going to talk to you a little bit about flat feet. So two of the most common questions that we get asked in the podiatry clinic is, have I got flat feet? And secondly, how does the flat feet affect my foot uh, and my feet, but also the rest of my body as well? So Rachel's got a pretty classic example of what we call a functional flat foot. So this is where, when we're in a, a neutral position, there's actually a pretty good arch here and everything functions okay. But when she's in her relaxed position, um, the, the arch becomes quite low and it becomes a flat foot. So to start off with, what I've done here is create a, a bisection line down the middle of the leg here. So I've started uh, at the middle of uh, Rachel's knee cap here and I've extended that line straight down the shin bone, down the middle of the leg, straight through the front of the ankle here or the sub tailor joint as we call it and then straight through the second toe here. So as Rachel is in this neutral position, this is the position that the foot functions most effectively in, most efficiently in. So in this neutral position, everything is in a nice straight line, as we can see, kneecap, straight down the, down the shin, through the joint, and straight through the second toe here. But if Rachel goes into her relaxed stance position, into this position here, we can see that the arch gets lower, and now we can see that there's this big angle at the sub tailor joint here, through the ankle joint, um, creating this angle at the bottom here. So this is what we would call a classic flat foot. It is synonymous with a number of, of conditions that we see regularly in the podiatry clinic. So the first one of these would be under the arch here. Uh, we see a lot of arch pain and heel pain or plantar fasciitis as we call it. Um, also around the inside of the ankle here can get really sore as these tendons and muscles further up get overused and stretched and strained. We also need to think about the Achilles tendon at the back of the heel here as well, can also um, have a lot of stretch put on it and cause a lot of pain there as well. So as we move further up the body, the first thing that we see is the, the shins here. So uh, shin splints is a very common condition that we see. Also growing pains in kids. Uh, this is the area that most kids will wake up in the middle of the night and they'll have pain at the front of the legs here. And that's because as the foot rolls across from this neutral position, these muscles at the front of the leg here have to work really hard to hold that foot up in this neutral position. So every time the foot rolls across, these muscles pull that foot back into shape. And that happens between eight and 10,000 times a day uh, because that's how many, how many steps the average person takes. So this is a really common condition that we see. We always talk about good supportive footwear, maybe some orthotics, um, as well, along with a whole bunch of other treatment modalities um, that I'll come back to in a second. So, moving further up the body, we come to the knees. As the foot rolls inwards, one of the first things that happens is that the knee rotates internally. So I'll show you that one again. From neutral, looking at the knee, this one rotates internally. So already we've created this angle at the knee joint here, which means that the knee is not functioning in its normal position. So there can be wear and tear on the joint, on the cartilages in those areas. We also get a bit of stretch on the ligaments that hold the knee together in this area here, and often a bit of um, cartilage damage because these cartilages get squashed on the outside. We can also think about the patella tendon, or this tendon that sits just under the kneecap here as well, which often gets overstretched when the knee rotates internally. Further up the body, we get the hips. So as the knee rotates internally, the hips rotate as well. So this is where, again, similar to the knee, uh, the hip joint is not sitting in the right spot. So there's wear and tear at the hip joint. But also, as the hip rotates internally, it tilts the pelvis forward as well. So this is where lower back pain can become quite common. So I guess the moral of the story is that with flat feet, that can obviously affect the foot and ankle and cause pain down here, but it also has a marked effect on the knees or shins, knees, hips, and lower back as well. So if you are experiencing any of these aches and pains, it's probably a good idea to come and see a podiatrist. Uh, look, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, if you have any questions, then please type them in the comment box below. 
Uh, Rachel or myself will answer those for you as soon as possible. And if you know someone who might benefit from seeing this type of video, then please share it with them or tag them in the comment box below and hopefully we can help them out too. So that's about it for now. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you soon. Hi everyone, it's Rachel here from Gallery of the Dietary. I just thought I'd do a quick demonstration on how we dry needle for heel pain. 
I've actually had a few requests over the last week where some people are still a little bit hesitant or a little bit scared about what dry needling entails, particularly when it comes to heel pain. So I thought I'd do a demonstration for you, hopefully put your mind at ease. Um, so have a look. So this is Kathy, one of our podiatrists. What we usually do is have a look at the calf muscle to start off with and find some trigger points. So I've already marked out Kathy's trigger points. So I'm just going to pop a couple of dry needles into those spots. So Kathy's not really going to feel anything. I'll just push it into the trigger. And Kathy might start to feel a little bit of an ache in the area. You feeling anything, Kathy? Yeah, a bit of a tingle, sort of a heavy feeling. Good. So if we get an ache or a tingle, that's a really good response. That means that it's actually doing something. Oopsies. Sorry, we'll do that one again. That's better. Okay. So now we're going to move down to the bottom of the foot and we're going to do the abductor hallucis, which is this muscle at the side, and then the quadratus plantae, which is the muscle in the arch area. These are two points that are key to getting on top of heel pain. Just going to do the abductor hallucis here. And then the last one is going to be in the QP or the quadratus plantae. And that's it. It's that simple. So Kathy's nice and comfortable there. Normally we would leave the dry needles in for about 10 to 15 minutes. Occasionally we'd give it a little tweak. Just push it in a little bit further as the muscle relaxes. So what the dry needles are going to do is increase circulation to the area and that helps with healing. Um, it also releases a peptide which is a natural pain response. We're getting awesome results um, with dry needling. If you have any questions please comment below and I'm more than happy to answer, for, um, answer them for you. Bye for now. Lower back pain, and again, let me say this, this is, I'm talking about pain in your lower back that has not come from an injury or a, a, a hernia, herniated disc or a spondylolisthesis or some condition that is medically not connected to the biomechanics of the foot and lower foundation structure. I'm talking about back pain, and there's been a lot of research done in the last few years showing that the hard flat ground we walk on causes our feet to pronate and collapse and when your feet pronate and collapse your knees internally rotate which I'll show you on our physical model shortly which causes a rotation or tilt in our pelvis. Now a lot of people will say I've got a dull ache in the lower part of my back and you know I may have been to a physiotherapist and the physiotherapist said well listen go and strengthen your st stomach muscles strengthen those muscles because it'll take the pressure off your back I say this it's good to strengthen your stomach muscles and a lot of times they do need strengthening but why are they weak in the first place? And why are the muscles in your back tighter and why is this imbalance occurring? Let's not say you've got a tight muscle here and a weak muscle there and just balance them up. Let's ask ourselves why are they like that? Generally the reason is is because we have a mechanical problem occurring which makes one muscle stronger and one muscle weaker. Now you know this from going to the gymnasium. How many times have you been to a gym and the exercise instructor there says, if you want to do this exercise properly, do it this way. What is he saying? Unless your bones are working in the correct posture, you're working the muscles incorrectly so that you will cause an imbalance and possible injury. Now in lower back pain, I have made so many orthotics, like I've lost count to be honest. And when I first started making orthotics, I didn't treat back pain, I treated the feet. But everybody would come back to me and say, you know Phil, my back is so much better. And so and after sort of doing so much work with the foot, I made it a point in my own head is to find out how do orthotics, and particular ortho heel, help with low back pain. So let's just go to our foot model and I'll show you a physical example of how this can occur. 
When looking at back pain, the most common area of back pain is in this low lumbosacral area here. And commonly, it's not caused by an injury or an accident, as in certain cases. We're talking about low back pain and tightness due to simply poor posture of the lower leg, which affects the knee and the hip and therefore the whole pelvic girdle. Many times, as I said, the pelvis becomes loose, and as the feet roll inwards, it tilts the pelvis forward, which increases the curvature of the lower back, causing pain. Now, if Lauren wears orthotics or ortho heel, we twist the feet out, it pulls the stomach area in, reduces the curvature of the back, and therefore balances up this lower area of her abdomen and back, removing this common cause of lower back pain. Hi everyone, it's Rachel here from Gallery of Podiatry. Do you have sore feet? Well here I want to talk to you today about footwear. Every day people come to us and ask us what sort of shoes they should buy to help their feet. They tell us that they've bought hundreds of pairs of shoes and none of them feel comfortable. Well if that's you, I've got some tips to give you to help you find the perfect um, shoe for you and keep your feet feeling happy all day. So. The first thing you need to look at is the heel counter, which is this area here at the back of the shoe. You want to make sure that the heel counter is nice and firm, so you shouldn't be able to push that in with your thumb. You can see here that I'm putting quite a lot of force on the back of the shoe, and it's really not budging. So if you push the back of the shoe and the back of the shoe falls in, that's no good. We want this area here to be really nice and firm, because that's what's going to support your ankle and keep your foot nice and stable while you're walking and moving around. The next thing to look at is what we call the torsional twist through the shoe. So you really shouldn't be able to twist the shoe too much through the middle here. If you pick up your shoe and you're able to basically wring out your shoe or twist it, again you're losing a lot of that support that you need from a shoe. When you bend the shoe, the shoe should only bend across the balls of the feet, not through the middle of the shoe here. So again we're looking to try and create the most support and stability through your shoe. Your shoe needs to have some kind of fastening mechanism. So whether that's a shoelace that you can adjust um, and secure your foot nicely in the shoe, or you're looking for a shoe that has a Velcro strap or a buckle. Something that you can adjust on your foot to make sure you've got the perfect fit. If the shoe is a slip-on shoe, so something like this for instance, you need to make sure that there's no gaps around your ankles and that the shoe's fitting nice and snug. When the shoe's too sloppy on your foot, your toes actually have to grip onto the shoe to hold onto, on, to keep the shoe onto your foot. So that's really going to tire your feet out and make your feet you know, work harder than what they really need to. At the end of the day, the shoe should just basically stay on your foot without you having to do any extra work to keep that shoe onto your foot. So there's my helpful tips for finding the perfect shoe for you. If you have any questions about footwear, please comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Hi, my name is Philip Vasili. I'm an Australian podiatrist and I've been in practice for over 25 years. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about orthotic technology, how these devices work, more importantly how can they treat the common aches and pains that we suffer from, from heel pain, knee pain and even back pain. Now as a podiatrist specialising in biomechanics, I've learned to understand how important the human foot is. We take between 5 to 8,000 footsteps per day on a very small unit which contains 26 to 28 bones per foot. So it is important that the foot is working correctly to prevent many of these common aches and pains that we do suffer from every day. When walking, our feet are the only interface with the ground. When we look at how the forces of walking can lead to common aches and pains, such as pain under the heel, pain at the back of the heel, and knee pain, one movement we are very interested in is called pronation. Pronation is the normal part of walking that happens every time we take a step. It is the movement that occurs during the period from the heel hitting the ground to the foot being flat on the ground. Now I'm going to talk to you about excess pronation, firstly what it is, and secondly how it affects the human body, from the foot through to the knee and even to the back. As you can see with Lauren, I've drawn a dot on her knee and also a dotted line down the front of her leg through to her ankle and to her second toe. If you look at this line, you'll see a curvature inwards. This is called excess pronation and it affects the majority of the population. 
Now this occurs because we're walking on hard, flat surfaces which causes our feet to roll over and our arches to collapse. Now as a podiatrist, what I want to see with Lauren's foot is this posture. As you can see, the arch rises, the knee realigns, and this line becomes a lot more straight. Now if Lauren holds it there, that looks correct, and it is correct. Now if I let Lauren relax her body, you'll see that her body rolls over. This is called the excess pronation. We get the rotation of the leg, which affects the knee, and also the muscles in the leg pull, and the feet collapses. Now this causes many aches and pains, much like bad wheel alignment on a car. It runs right from your foot, through to your shins, into your knee, and up to your back. So how can orthotic technology help? Our orthotic technology is shown to reduce overpronation, which can cause problems such as heel pain, knee pain, and even back pain. Now if we look at the line on Lauren's leg, you'll see it curved inwards. This is what we call excess pronation. Now if I place the orthotic device under her foot, which runs from her heel up through her arch to her forefoot, look at the difference. Very dramatic improvement of the line of the knee through to the shin, the ankle, and the forefoot. Even the height of her arch has improved. Again, if I take it out, watch the difference. Lauren's foot pronates again, which rolls in, causing the arch to collapse. The leg to rotate inwards, which strains the musculature here, rotates the knee, commonly causing knee pain, and even affecting the back. Once more, we're going to show the correction with the orthotic device. And here we can see the perfect alignment of the knee, the shin, and even the foot. This technology is available in all of our orthotic products and it is built right into our footwear range. G'day everyone, it's Nick at Galleria Podiatry here. Look, today I've just seen a young girl who came in with knee pain and I was trying to explain to her how lower limb and foot function can cause knee pain. So I thought I'd try and explain it to you as well. So most commonly we would see knee pain with kids and adults who have got flat feet or the feet are rolling towards the inside. So that'll definitely be the most common type. So what tends to happen at the knee joint? First thing that happens as the foot rolls inwards is that the knee joint rotates internally and moves towards the midline of the body. So we end up with this angle at the knee joint. So when we look at the joint as an internal structure, essentially what we're doing is going a little bit like this. I'm probably exaggerating it a bit, but it will give you an idea. So we're creating this angle at the knee joint. So as you can see here, we're gonna get some wear and tear on cartilages on the outside of the knee in this area here because of the pressures. But also you can see I've overstretched this one too often and demonstrated this one a lot but ligaments on the inside of the knee can also get overstretched and become really sore in this area here. One of the most common conditions that we see is patella tendonitis, both in adults and kids, particularly those that are really active. So that's where we get pain just under the kneecap in the tendon that holds the kneecap in place. So that's firstly because of this angle here. So there's a bit of a bend in the patella tendon here, which means it's got to stretch further which means it's tighter and it's more prone to being um, injured or, or microscopic tears. The second aspect to this is that with this angle, the kneecap is not sitting in the right spot and it's also being pulled in the wrong direction so you can get wear and tear under the kneecap as well. So yeah, quick explanation for you about how foot and lower limb function can cause knee pain. Look, if you've got any uh, questions or comments to make, pop them in the comment box below or if you know someone who is suffering with knee pain, uh, by all means, share this video with them or tag them in the comment box below. Hopefully that helps you out. Until next time, take care. See you soon. Let's. During the sizzle of summer, women can't wait to expose their toes. Strappy, sexy sandals are a must for many unless you're like medical assistant Donna Luther. I wear closed-in shoes instead of sandals in the summer. Donna stopped wearing sandals and painting her pinkies years ago after dropping something on her toe, damaging the nail. It's just, you know, ugly. Donna decided to restore her toenail with a new procedure called Carryflex. It's brand new and done by the foot doctor she works for. Donna says it was a patient who convinced her. She loved it. 
She just couldn't believe, you know, that something like this is possible. Podiatrist Stephen Monaco says he can replace toenails that are broken or destroyed by fungus, taking them from this to this. We're putting it over deformed nails or diseased nails. And because of that, it needs to be medically applied. And that's where the difference between us and a salon comes in. Dr. Monaco removes the damaged part of the nail, treats any fungus, then builds a new nail Maybe right into perfect. the nail bed. It's dried by ultraviolet light. Donna's new toe is ready in about 15 minutes. It is magnificent. Remember what it looked like before? Oh, it's beautiful. It's a flexible polymer. It's not a rigid acrylic so that the uh, material stays on the nail better. It adheres better. It doesn't pop off. It's flexible. It moves with the nail. It'll need occasional touch-ups as the real nail grows back. Dr. Monaco says he's treated grateful women and men. Some of them have always been to the, almost been to the point of wow. tears because they're so glad that they have a normal-looking nail again.